call it? History repeats itself. So we're going to take a gather here, another gather. You know, it hasn't been that long that humans could just flip a switch and have electric light. It's easy to forget how, how, how we consume that invention, but, you know, it hasn't been that long in the whole scope of time. Mr. Edison uh, has claimed to have discovered that, and he did it with a lot of help, and it was actually only about 140 years ago, or somewhere thereabouts, in 1879. As you can tell from my numbering earlier, I'm not fantastic at math, I am. Oh. Flowers of life. Flower broke. <laughs> and so, <laughs> getting off track. And so, you know, it's up for debate how long humans have been uh, around. You know, some people say thousands of years and millions or even billions. And it's all kind of comes down to what you believe. Nobody can really prove any of that. But what's an absolute fact is that Mr. Edison and his team of helpers created that light bulb, you know, in the year of 1879. And it wasn't as though he had this idea and just just made it happen uh, right away. You know, it took him experiment after experiment after experiment after experiment. And he said it took him something along the lines of 9,999 tries before he found that first successful formula for making the electric light bulb. And that's a phenomenal amount of, like, for us to just count from 100. And, you know, when you think about that, you throw out a number of... 9,999 or whatever number, you know, it's it's such a, an incredible amount of perseverance. And he was being interviewed by a reporter uh, after he was successful at making that light bulb. And the reporter was just amazed. He was like, how could you go on knowing you had nearly 10,000 failures before you ever found some sort of success? And Mr. Edison looked back at the man kind of puzzled. And he said, I didn't have 10,000 failures. I found 10,000 successful ways how not to make a light bulb. <laughs> and it was that attitude that enabled him to go forth and make that light bulb. And so glass is a lot like life in the sense that from the moment you begin this process of glowing, you must be turning. Otherwise, gravity is going to pull your glass to the floor. Just like in life, from the moment you begin living, you must be learning. Otherwise, gravity is going to pull your mind to the floor. And so that's a rather new invention in, uh, in glass history, this, this idea of the electric light bulb, but something even more new is, is an invention that's called fiber optics. Fiber optics are these little bitty strands of glass that travel all over the planet, sending information. And just how thin can they get? Thinner than oh, a hair. Amazingly enough, scientists here in Corning, New York, just about 50 years ago, figured out and conceptualized that they could stretch a string of glass, and not just stretch a string of glass, but send wavelengths of light from one end to the other. And that is how we communicate today. This invention has revolutionized the way humans interact with one another, and these little cables these little cables span all over the planet, through the oceans, and this is what enables us to talk to people in China in real time. This material, incredible invention. And what's so amazing to me about this whole thing is that stretching a little string of glass, this new uh, discovery, is an extension off of the very first glass making that was ever done over 3,000 years ago, back around the time when the pyramids were being built by the pharaohs! <laughs> no. I don't know if there was a lot of laughter while they were building those. I think there was a lot of... a lot of sweat. And a lot of tears. And hopefully I'll bring you to some tears of laughter. And not joy. And pain. Oh no, and not pain. So, <laughs> getting off track. I'm going off track. We're going to try to get back on. So, that process... <laughs> Sorry, folks.
folks. That process. <laughs> I very easily do this. Um, it's called cooling cane. You see, they used to stretch rods of glass. You couldn't just go to the store and buy a bottle of water. You know, a glass maker had to make every single uh, glass vessel. And they didn't have machines before then. And so the way they would do that is they would stretch rods of glass. And they'd take those rods and cut them up into little bitty pieces. And then they'd take those pieces and put it kind of in a mold back into the fire. And it would form into the vessels. And they'd use those vessels to hold their most precious of things, like perfumes, oils, the most precious of all. You got it. <clears throat> and so, you might be wondering, and in case you're not, you might be really soon, how do you actually put the color in the glass? Because as you see this glass, it's coming from these ice cube looking pieces. But as it heats up, it turns into kind of like a yellow liquid. If it was dark, if we were inside, that would actually look kind of orange. But it's really just giving off its own light source. That's not the that's not the actual color of the glass. The color of the glass is still clear. And as it cools down, it will go back to that clear state. And so, one of the ways we can do it, I'd like to show you. There's a countless amount of ways to actually apply the color. One of the things I love asking, and this is really fun when people uh, say something, respond. This is really fun when people respond. What I love asking, yeah. Have any? Have you ever had ice cream? Yeah. Sounds like some of you have had ice cream. <laughs> have, uh, have any of you ever had ice cream with sprinkles? Oh yeah. But the glass is a lot like sprinkles in the sense that if you get glass chips and then you get your glass hot enough, you can dip it into the sprinkles and it'll stick a lot like ice cream will on an ice cream cone. And you can sort of feel even from here just the radiant heat that's kicking off of this. I mean, I'm not sure if you guys yeah, know that don't from touch. there. But <laughs> just to give you an idea, I mean, this is still, it doesn't look too, too terribly hot, but as I said a second ago, it is still uh, hopefully not going to burn anybody in the process. <laughs> You guys laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and they get earned you. <laughs> so, from there, all we really need to do, and this takes a little bit of group participation also, I'm going to say a word. I'd like for you guys to scream it really loud. We need to give it a little bit of fire. 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 We're going to give it a little bit of passion. Passion. We're gonna give it a little bit of love. love. Can we try love again? We're gonna give it a little bit of love. Love. You're, you're getting there. We're gonna give it. How about we give it some truth? Truth. How about some? Seems like some of you are trailing off. Are you not all? Are you not all in this with me? Or are you in this with me? We're. Yeah. I feel you. I can feel you, my friend. Let's give it some dedication. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Let's yeah. give it some determination. Determination. Let's give it a little more love. More love. <laughs> and why don't we give it some truth? Some truth. And we're going to give it one more thing. Why don't we give it some more color? Our best. Our best. Thank you. Audience. So what I like saying at this point, Ooh I like telling people that I know I make this look rather easy. But what I also like saying is that I've had to work really hard to learn how to do this. I mean, I went to a college and I studied in a university and I've traveled all over the globe learning how. But I guess what I'm really trying to say here is that this is something you would like to try to do. I believe you can do it. In fact, I believe you could do anything. But you must be willing to work for it. And if you are so pretty today, and if you are willing to work for it, and if you are willing to put your passion and your love and your truth and your dedication and determination to yourself, 
you truly can accomplish anything. <laughs> Don't touch that. So maybe that's why they call this process pain.